okay you you agree with that point right so we'll be dealing with uh, new media technologies like multimedia and emerging technologies video on demand then radio and web tv impact of new media on traditional media okay so uh, let's begin see new media is a holistic term which is used to describe a host of interactive computer and web based communication technologies right it also refers to the convergence of computing and media services through the acquisition or let's say manipulation storage and distribution of text sound uh, still and moving images and graphics over a network of computers okay so the term new media is also used in a comparative sense to distinguish from you know uh, forms of media right see uh, to distinguish different forms of media like from the mainstream media uh, uh, and then uh, we have this main uh, mainstream traditional media units like the newspapers radios uh, televisions and cinema right so we'll discuss how the entry of a new medium leads to competition with traditional medium and also towards innovation and convergence in order to coexist peacefully so see as discussed earlier in our uh, you know previous classes we have seen that the advances um, in you know uh, in the computer applications have had a great impact on every section of the society like the academics or let's say the medicine agriculture even the governance banking etc right so we will you know now see new media technologies in detail and also discuss their uh, operationalization okay and some of the other applications like the video on demand and web tv okay so new media technology has become an integral part of the socio economic and political life of an individual right it plays a prominent role in the media industry today and digital technology has become an integral part of media production and distribution so professionals in journalism public relations or advertising broadcasting and mass communication they are all using new media technologies in their day to day work so some of the major new media technologies are the digital and computer based technologies like the internet the world wide web the websites the multimedia then in computer games we have cd roms and dvds right similarly there are other associated web based technologies like the collaborative wikis we have social media tools like blogging then micro blogging and we have we also have the social networking sites etc okay they all have created revolution in the field of communication so what differentiates the new media from traditional media is its ability to interact and also engage with its audience right so it provides easily accessible user friendly technologies which are affordable and simple to install and use so it has also democratized communication by empowering ordinary citizens to you know produce their own media content and also to distribute them among wide global audiences so similarly the new media also integrates easily with other forms of communication and devices so today the internet can be easily accessed from much smaller handheld devices like the tablets and the smart uh, smartphones which we are using now right so in the initial period of the new media evolution uh mass communication academics did not ex uh, you know they did not even accept it as a form of mass communication media earlier okay so computer based mediums of interactive technologies have been referred to as the new telematic media earlier why telematic because they combine telecommunications and informatics which is computer based and which is hybrid or flexible let's say interactive they have public and uh, uh, you know this public and private functions which uh, interconnect and also most importantly they are characterized by minimum regulations right so mass communication have overlooked not only the internet but the entire field of computer mediated com mediated communications right now because see they say that the problem with internet is that it will change communication and most mass communication theorists do not want change right they want to stick to the traditional mediums of print and broadcast so new media scholars counter you uh, know that the field of mass communication has changed with the advent of television newspapers and radio so also 
one must accept the changes brought about by the internet as well and they argue that there is far more than semantic difference between conceptualizing a new communication technology by its communicative form rather than the technology itself so the tradition of mass communication research has accepted uh, newspapers radio and television as its you know objects of study and also the technology changes and media converge those research categories must be flexible and also they should rationalize right see it has been stated that for any medium to be considered as mass media it must achieve a critical mass of adopters and interactive media can be used as more and more people adopt it right so the internet has the potential to become the largest mass media worldwide because it follows the you know source message receiver model of traditional mass communication however it also uh, you know involves different forms of communication right see we can you know categorize the internet audiences based on the nature of the communication into you know some categories right see we can have one to one asynchronous communication such as the email which is the personal communication like other form of personal communication then we can have many to many asynchronous communication that is the electronic bulletin boards okay that is a form of group communication and we can have um, synchronous communication that means that can be one to one one to few or one to many that we can decide right so uh, different forms of communication can be taken place in the internet as well so talking about multimedia and the emerging technologies multimedia is a computer based technology which you know uses diverse media resources so as i said it is a combination of text audio images two dimensional and three dimensional images as well okay then we have video and graphics to create meaningful and interactive content so it is a new media tool which empowers media professionals to supplement the new story with multimedia graphics uh, you know which results in improvement of the or you can say the comprehensibility of the message so similarly the technique is used by other fields of communication like advertising and public relations as well so multimedia is also a great teaching aid and it also can engage the audience attention effectively okay so uh, understood okay any doubt okay so professionals from the field of journalism and advertising uh they use computer software to develop and manage online graphics and content okay so it is also used by specialists uh, to produce content for various mediums such as training programs then web pages and news sites so some of the other career prospects that are associated with multimedia are the web developers and the graphic artists digital photographers instructional designers then we have production assistants and they i know we also have this uh, something known as desktop publishers okay so multimedia production is divided into linear and non linear categories okay where linear multimedia content progresses often without any navigational control for the viewer such as a cinema or you know of or a film then non linear content is interactive in nature and it allows users to uh, you know to have a hold or to control the process of the presentation so example of a non linear content are video games and online training materials okay then we have uh, something called as video on demand okay so the video on demand is an interactive service offered to television audiences and internet users to watch videos of their choice in real time okay and download it for viewing later and then uh, it can be used for entertainment okay that means for ordering movies transmitted digitally then uh, it is used in education that is viewing training videos and then also it is used in video conferencing okay that means enhancing the presentations with video clips 
and then the video content streams through a set of box or the computer or digital video recorder then it allows you know, you know to torrent movies and audio visual programs from the comfort of your home with facilities and you know to rewind and forward options as well so video on demand is a convenient way of viewing films and television programs and was originally introduced in hong kong in the 1990s okay so it eliminates the need to go to your video store to buy films and provides access to a wide collection of material so today most cable operators offer pay per view services to the subscribers for real time you know viewing or also the downloading into a digital video recorder okay then there are various steps uh, in a video on demand process like see the list of videos and added information for example the titles the star or the cost etc which is hosted by the operator in the website or information management system through the process of you know uh, terrestrial transmission or satellite distribution so it is from this list that the customer makes a selection then the user or the audience requisitions for a movie that means the films videos which are in an analog format have to be digitized and compressed and distributed to a video server so when the customer selects the you know video on demand channel on the set top box the application is loaded onto the set top box so this step includes a management operation okay to make the requisite delivery right so this includes the billing system or a controller which manages online demand services and tells the video server you know, what to do and then the controller uh, for the delivery network which allocates the resources necessary to fulfill a customer request so the management allocate the resources for the delivery and it sets up the production scheme uh, which you know allows the subscriber to view the movie okay so video on demand is very popular today and it, uh, you know it's common as well especially to uh, you know among the uh, youngsters okay so clear any doubt any doubt here video on demand then we have internet radio and web tv okay so internet radio is similar to traditional radio but it differs in the way of transmission see while a traditional radio uses a standard am or fm uh, digital signal internet radio is transmitted directly to computers or computer devices via the internet using a streaming technology here so there are you know two ways in which audio and video files can be accessed over the internet so the first method is to download the same and view or listen to the content after the you know destination file is loaded onto your system so however in case of streaming it refers to a progressive uh, you know the progressive uh, nature of the download that means the speed of which uh, is dependent on the connection and it will enable you to receive and view simultaneously okay while the content has been downloading you can simultaneously view it right so one hears of streaming over the you know the net which is nothing but simultaneously broadcasting over both the regular radio stations and internet in real time so apart from streaming one can also download the audio for broadcasting by storing it in an audio file in the computer then we have compressed formats like the mp3 you know it is the most popular popular form of audio downloads but you know any type of audio file like we have uh, different formats like uh, we have ogg we have wma so all this can be delivered through a web or ftp site so most up to date software media players can play streaming audio using these popular formats so streaming audio is not stored but you know only played so it is a continuous broadcast that works through these software packages so the encoder the server and the player right so the encoder converts audio content into a streaming format then the server makes it available over the internet and the player retrieves the content okay so for a live broadcast the encoder and streamer work together in real time then an audio feed runs onto the sound card of a computer running the encoder software at the you know broadcast location and the stream is uploaded to the streaming server so since that requires a large amount of computing resources the streaming server must be dedicated server 
so internet radio can appeal to micro communities of listeners focus on special music or interest so in comparison to traditional radio internet radio is not limited to just audio but it can also provide scope for photos or graphics then we have text and links as well as the interactivity such as the message boards and we also have chat rooms so internet radio is so simple that any ordinary individual with minimum technical infrastructure can start this so all you need to set up an internet radio station uh, is a cd player then you require a, you know ripper software that means copies of audio tracks from a cd onto a uh, computer's hard drive then you should have a sorted recording and editing softwares microphones then you should have an audio mixer then um, an an outboard audio gear that means an equalizer or a compressor etc right then a digital audio card is required and dedicated computer with encoder software should be there and then you should also have a streaming media server okay so today all uh, you know major radio stations in the world and in india have an online presence so if you are further interested in this topic you can you know uh, check it online in the google just type web radio and you can find all these things okay internet and web radio then talking about internet video so just like the internet radio the web television also works on the same principle of streaming audio visual content on the internet so internet television can be accessed by selecting content from a channel directory or you know archive and then stream it into the computer using a media player so these days there are hundreds of user generated collaborative sites on the web so the most popular being the youtube where individuals and groups post audio visual content ranging from education to spiritualism and then business to entertainment so an individual armed with ordinary video recording device or a phone can make and you know post videos online okay so then we have something called as iptv so another aspect of web television is the iptv or internet protocol television okay so internet protocol is the language devices used to communicate over a computer network so this system of television is not based on streaming of content but transmission of video uh, using the internet protocol so this iptv is a system where a digital television service is delivered to subscribers using the internet protocol over a broadband connection so the television with the help of a set top box becomes a part of the network So, in a point-to-point -point IPTV connection, users will be able to view their own exclusive choice of the broadcast with facilities like the video on demand, you know, which is a personal video store. Then, besides electronic program guide or the personal video recorder, where the you know, uh, it will be fully interactive with one's own personal needs. They have option to use features like pause, then fast forward and rewind when they are watching a movie on the TV. Right? So, it will be possible to have personalized advertising also. So currently, IPTV can be received on a set-top box or a PC, and many IPTV service providers also offer voice and data capabilities with the IPTV service. Okay, and then there are some of the features of IPTV. See, the IPTV enables two-way interactivity. It also, uh, you know, allows audience to select programming of their choice, also to interact, personalize, and control viewing experience. Then the transmission is in real time and of higher quality. and it is possible to integrate a number of services directly with the television content such as the telephony services advertisement then emergency alert web services interactive voting etc so the difference between internet uh, video and iptv is that iptv or the internet video the nature of content continuous streams of content you know uh, segments are there then content selection there are hundreds of programs and millions of content files we have you know so many channels available so the content format uh, see one or two formats or dozens of formats will be selected by the provider or the multiplayers then delivery network we have private ip network that is the public internet and the viewing device is the consumer tv via uh, you know a, a computer set or a consumer pc display or a, you know top box device so uh, there are certain steps to deliver iptv to the end user so what are the steps first is to acquire the programming or video content that means see the vast majority of this content is received via satellite right so requiring a head end facility it is at this point where all national broadcasters enter the network right so you have to encode the streams 
So the digital or analog content that has been received has to be re-encoded for multicast, that is in IP transport. So in this stage, input is encoded into a format suitable for the delivery. Then the distribution network obviously needs to be some kind of wide area network and is because it is need to deliver IPTV services to the customer's homes. So this network needs to have adequate bandwidth with the ability to implement quality of service, okay? And then the end user, the television customer, that is the television customer, you will expect a user-friendly viewing experience, right? So typically presented in the form of an electronic program guide. The middleware, uh, you know, presents it is to the viewer via the set-top box. So the set-top box is used here to present the uh, viewing experience. So this is generally considered to be the set-top box, which is just not too different in appearance from the, you know, set-top box provided by the cable company uh, for the digital service tire. So or the, you can have a set-top box included with the home satellite package, which is also a satellite receiver. So this IPTV set-top box works hand-in-hand -hand with the middleware. Okay. So what are the impact of new media on traditional media? See, we have discussed in the previous classes that the media sector has evolved in different stages, right? Each time a new media technology surfaces, there is a competition between the new and old forms for capturing the audience's attention. So ultimately, the new media is accepted and the old uh, media forms adapt themselves to the new situation, right? See, for example, the representation of a classic literary work in the form of a motion picture may not go down well with the literature level. So similarly, the good old radio faded into, you know, in 1980s due to popularization of television. But then again, it resurfaced back in the 1990s as FM radios and web radios again in 2000. So thus, it has been witnessed that traditional media technologies have taken many years to go through stages of development, then introduction, adoption, and then wide acceptance. So similarly, the new media technologies like the internet, web, and social media, they were initially met with aversion by the traditional media. So with its high speed interactivity and reliability, it emerged as a popular interpersonal mass communication tool. So today, uh, we see the convergence of multiple platforms into a single entity, right? So the, the newspapers, magazines, television channels have all realized the worth of an online edition. So initially, the power of the social media was sidelined earlier, right? However, today, all popular media outlet, you know, outlets, they have their Twitter or blog and Facebook accounts and social media is seen as an incredible source of information. Okay. Then we have, you know, um, a uh, we have a process called the life cycle of a... Uh, you know, the National Life Cycle of New Media Evolution, which was published in the journal in uh, New Media and Society in 2004, where, you know, the scholars have presented a complete graphic model of new media evolution that includes of the birth, okay, the birth of the media, the penetration, the growth, the maturation, the, you know, then adaptation. So there are various stages of evolution cited in the model, okay, which we'll be discussing now. See, first uh, stage is the birth. That means the commencement of the life cycle. So a new medium draws on an existing technology medium. So the inventors may not always foresee its real ultimate use, right? Then we have a market penetration. So the new medium enters the market, developing new users and attracting users. Then we have a growth stage. That means developers and users learn to exploit, apply, and also expand the unique capabilities of the medium. Then uh, after growth, we have a you know, maturation point. That means the new medium or you know, adapting old medium finds its place in the dynamic communication environment. Then uh, we have defensive resistance. That means competition between old media and the new medium forces the former to seek new directions in order to perceive the traditional audiences, right? So there is adaptation. That means uh, the traditional medium adapts to the new situation by developing a different function and not preserving finding its new audiences. Uh, one example here can be uh, of newspapers, you know, having its presence online, catering to the needs of the online uh, audiences and adapting themselves to the new technology. Then we have a stage called convergence where, you know, the traditional medium cannot survive on its own. 
uh, but it preserves its function by merging with or incorporating into a new medium. Then we have obsolescence. That means the traditional medium does not successfully adapt to change. If it does not adopt, it declines or sometimes it disappears as well, right? See, the new media technologies refer to the convergence of computing and media services through the acquisitions or manipulation or storage and distribution of text, sound, we have still and moving images and graphics over a network of computers. So we have also discussed in detail some of the applications of new media like the multimedia and then web TV, internet, radio, video on demand. So we also have discussed elaborate discussion on the competition between the traditional media and the new media sectors and how they have adapted themselves and, you know, uh, coexist peacefully today. Okay. The multimedia means more than one medium, right? So, however, today it refers to a computer-based technology which uses diverse media sources like a combination of text, audio, images. And I said, right, images can be two-dimensional and three-dimensional. Then uh, we have video and graphics to create meaningful and interactive content. So, the growth in personal computing or new operating systems and graphics have all laid the, you know, evidence here. Okay for the development of multimedia technologies. So the term multimedia, okay, the term multimedia was coined by a uh, singer and artist, Bob Goldstein to promote, you know, in, uh, to promote his uh, uh, opening light works at uh, Southampton. And then he's, uh, he's regarded as a key person associated with the development of multimedia uh, with the launch of hypertext. Hypertext is a mechanism which links one text to multiple texts. Okay. So he started a, a project known as uh, Zanadu where he experimented with the hypertext system. That means no one event or single person can be attributed the credit of inventing uh, the multimedia because a series of global developments starting with the advent of microprocessors, the development of the World Wide Web, uh, which was uh, associated by Tim Berners-Lee, then the launch of the Apple computer software called the HyperCard, the approval of the MPG image, okay? So all these, uh, you know, paved the way for the launch of multimedia. So today, macro media flash drives are used in most of the animation and multimedia you see on the internet, right? So the applications of multimedia are large and are just used by professionals in the fields of communication, media, uh, advertising, teaching, medicine, entertainment, etc. So in the first edition of, you know, the McGraw Hills multimedia book, how it, making it work, it was established and published in the year 1993. Okay. So he declared that multimedia is any combination of text, graphic art, sound, animation, and video that is delivered by computer. So when you allow the user, the viewer of the project to control what and you know when these elements are delivered, it is called as interactive multimedia. And then when you provide a structure of linked elements to which the user can navigate, our interactive multimedia becomes hypermedia. Okay. So now, uh, in short, we can say that multimedia is a combination of audio, video, textual, and graphical representation of digitized information to produce impressive effect on the targeted audiences. So such information can be represented, stored, transmitted, and processed electronically. And it is also referred to as a synergetic process whereby elements work together to make a stronger and more cohesive whole. Okay, so a multimedia application is an application which uses a collection of multiple media elements, example, text, graphics, images, sound, audio, or animation and a video, right? So the origin of the multimedia um, can be discussed with the development of hypertext and hypermedia. Okay. Then uh, there are, you know, different types of multimedia. It is generally seen that there are two types of multimedia that is linear and non-linear, right? In the linear category, the content progresses without any navigation control for the viewer. It's just like a motion picture or a movie. 
and the other category that is the non linear multimedia is interactive and its users get an opportunity to control and also to decide the direction and progression of content example uh, example can be a computer game or a self based computer based training or uh, a non linear content is also known as the uh, uh, hypermedia content here so multimedia presentations can be both live and recorded and a recorded presentation may allow interactivity via an navigation system so a live multimedia presentation may allow interactivity with the interaction uh, with the presenter or a performer okay so see we have text sound graphics we have an interactive multimedia okay we have animation photos videos so a multimedia system has four basic characteristics okay see it should be multimedia systems must be computer controlled and the multimedia systems are also integrated okay and the information they handle must be represented digitally and the interference to the final presentation of media is usually interactive here okay so uh, tools of multimedia uh, the multimedia presentations can be delivered in two types see in the first case it can be you know viewed live on stage or it can be projected it can be transmitted it or it can be played locally with the media player okay and a broadcast uh, may be a live or recorded multimedia presentation so digital online multimedia presentations may be downloaded at or streamed and in the second case interactive multimedia games and simulations may be used in real and virtual environments so these can be used with multiple users in an online network or locally with an offline computer or a game system or or you know a simulator So enhanced levels of interactivity are made possible by combining multiple forms of media content. And the basic tools which are required for multimedia are, you know, the text-based editing tools, or a graphical tools, sounding. Uh, we have sound editing tools. We have animation, video, and digital movie tools as well. Okay. See, text-based editing tools are usually word processors, and this is software that you will commonly find in a personal computer. And word processors are usually part of the office suite, and these are powerful applications that include spell checker or table formatters and pre-built templates for you no know, commonly used documents. So the word processors are used for creating you know project letters, invoices, and storyboards, and they also allow embedded uh, multimedia elements. So the commonly known word processors is MS Word or Microsoft Word, and these days there are several cloud services like the Google Docs, which are available online. Okay, then we also have graphical tools. The graphical tools include painting and drawing tools, three D modeling tools. We have, ah, uh, we have image editing tools. Okay. See, ah, uh, in the recent years, the application of multimedia have become diverse. they are used in fields which range from medicine to academics and also from virtual gaming to even nuclear physics now so however the most evident contribution of multimedia is seen in the entertainment industry like mainstream cinema we have now animated films media and advertising right and then most importantly in the gaming sector so it is used to develop special effects in movies and animations then multimedia games are a popular pastime and are software programs available either as cd roms or dvds then multimedia is also used in education right now right i right. it is used in education training and it is used for e learning okay so uh, uh talking about writing for the multimedia we see we can say that multimedia writing is a collaborative effort in which writers have to work you know in uh, with uh, you know um, jointly with graphic artists or uh, video clip makers or uh, there are animation producers and others to produce a work which does not have a linear path see as we all know that multimedia writing is based on the principle of hypertext so hence the writing follows a non linear format and the structure of writing appears more like a you know alternative path which can be followed at any point of the way so the kind of structure will inevitably affect the kind of writing produced for multimedia 
Firstly, multimedia writers must learn to write for discrete skins, the basic page or a multimedia work, right? So it is quite challenging. And then, you know, see, you should choose your text and background colors very carefully. And you should not use backgrounds that obscure your text or use colors that are very hard to read. Then uh, dark colored text on a light colored background is easier to read than, you know, light colored text on a dark colored background, right? So all graphic images and elements, typefaces, headings, and footers should remain consistent throughout your project. Okay. And then you must adopt uh, consistency and coherence in language design and presentation. Since still, uh, we have these documents which are intended to be uh, read, right? Not sequentially, one must keep this in mind while writing for the multimedia. And also you have to divide your content into logical units and you have to establish a hierarchy of importance among the units, okay? You have to integrate text, graphics, audio, and video. So several elements like the graphics, audio, video, etc., they contribute in making a final multimedia project, right? So in order to assemble and integrate the different elements, certain types of authoring tools are required. An authoring tool is a software package which developers use to create and package content deliverably, you know, especially for the end users. So these tools are not integrate. Uh, but they also, uh, you know, integrate the different components and include interactive user control. So a number of specialized applications used during the process of authoring are known as metaphors. Okay, so there are um, different kinds also. Then we have different image and video formats like the GIF, JPEG, TIFF, and BNP, which we have discussed in the earlier classes, right? So. Um, See, uh, what are the, you know, uh, interactive multimedia and its applications in education and training? See, the term interactive multimedia is a catch-all phrase to describe the new wave of computer software, you know, that primarily deals with the provisions of information. So the multimedia component is characterized by the presence of text, pictures, sound, animations, and video, okay? which are all organized into some coherent program. So the interactive component refers to the process of empowering the user to control the environment, usually by a computer. Okay, so these interactive multimedia has opened up new opportunities, okay, for, uh, you know, affordable and quality education for people from all walks of life. Here, the learner is given more control over what and how he or she wants to learn. And the tra this transmission of information is done via different, you know, uh, tools like the sight, the visual tool, the sound, the touch, that it allows, you know, learning to the most natural means, that is the senses. And the more user-friendly and intuitive in interactive multimedia program becomes, the more likely the learners, you know, they will become motivated and benefit from the interactive uh, learning experience. So there are some advantages of interactive, you know, learning and uh, they can be discussed as well see it has reduced learning time right interactive multimedia video training can reduce training time by up to 60 percent uh, over traditional classroom methods okay so when the same program is used by more students the cost per student is reduced so unlike the traditional instructional system which needs to cater to teacher salaries and overheads right so instructional uh, quality and quantity are not compromised as technology-based interactive instruction is consistent and reliable. And the interactive approach provides a strong learning reinforcement and therefore it boosts content retention over time. Then we have flexibility. The flexibility comes from the ability to navigate uh, by using a keyboard, mouse or touch screen or through an interactive program and to choose what and how much information we want and when we want it, right? See, in the traditional teaching model, the teacher holds on to the knowledge base and delivers what knowledge base directly to the student, right? In the new situation, with the help of multimedia, the teacher becomes a true facilitator. That means a manager of the learning process rather than the source of all knowledge. Okay. 
So hypertext, uh, we have discussed, it is text displayed on the web, which is interconnected to other texts in the same document, right? As well as other documents. So the hypertext pages are interconnected by hyperlinks. That means which is typically, you know, it is activated by a mouse click or sometimes usually a key press sequence or by touching the screen. Okay. Then we also have social media. See, social media is the term often used to refer to new forms of media that involve interactive participation. Okay. So often the development of media is divided into two different ages. That is, uh, you know, the broadcast age and the interactive age. And social media plays a vital role in transforming people's lifestyle these days. And social media, you know, includes social networking sites and blogs where people can easily connect with each other. Okay. We have social media, you know, so impact of social media can be discussed. Then social media and networking sites we have like Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. We have blogs, Wikipedia, etc. Right. Then we also have social media apps like uh, WhatsApp, Instagram, etc. Okay. So this, uh, you know, concept of social media, it, it emerged in the late 1800s. Okay. So uh, discussing upon the characteristics of social media, see several characteristics make social media a unique communication tool. Okay. See, first social media users are the content creators. People, you know, can create their own blogs, write a Facebook or Twitter post expressing their thoughts on an issue or post a video blog about the latest travel adventures on YouTube, right? See, this enables users to be active participants in the communication process. And audiences are more immersed and they are also engaged with the brand messages because they can provide feedback to companies, uh, you know, thereby creating a two-way conversation. Then we have instant communication, right? This is another characteristics of social media. See, where audiences do not have to wait until scheduled news broadcast to, you know, receive information because reporters and media outlets can bring the news directly to social media platforms. And furthermore, people can easily share and post news content on their networks. And social media also foster a sense of interconnectedness and community, you know, by bringing people across the globe together online. So those living in the United States can easily interact with those living in Australia, right? So it is social media is user-based. Before social networks like Facebook or, you know, MySpace become the norm, websites were based on content that was updated by one user and it was read by the internet visitors, right? So the flow of information was in a single direction and the direction of future updates was determined by the webmaster or writer. That means online social networks on the other hand are built and directed by users themselves. Without the users, the network would be an empty space filled with empty forums, right? Applications and chat rooms. So users populate the network with conversations and content. So the direction of that content is determined by anyone who takes part in the discussion. So this is what, you know, makes social networks so much more exciting and dynamic for internet users. Then another uh, characteristic is the interactiveness. Means, uh, you know, this is another characteristic of modern, modern social media networks. It is a fact that they are so interactive. This means that a social media a social network is not just a collection of chat rooms and forums, anyone. Because websites like Facebook are filled with network based gaming applications where you can play, you know, together or you can challenge a friend, right? Which is tournament. So these social networks are quickly becoming a pastime, you know, that more people are choosing over television because it's more than just entertainment. It's a way to connect and have fun with friends these days. Okay. Then uh, social networks are built, uh, you know, and thrive from community concepts. This means that they are just like communities or social groups around the world. Uh, they are founded on the fact that members hold common beliefs or hobbies. Okay, they are community driven. Social networks are based on the same principle, right? Within most modern online social networks today, you'll find some communities of people who share commonalities. Uh, such as, you know, an alumni of a particular high school or an, uh, suppose an animal uh, welfare group. Not only you can discover new friends with these interest-based communities, 
but you can also reconnect with old friends that you lost contact with many years ago okay so another characteristics will be you not know, to maintain relationships or to build relationships so unlike the websites of the past social networks thrive on relationships so the more relationships that you have within the network the more established you are towards the center of that network so like the concept uh, most pyramid schemes are focused on so with this uh, online uh, social networks the concept really works in a powerful way okay so when you have this 20 contacts and you publish a note or an update on that page that content you know proliferates across the network of contacts and also their sub contacts and that's much larger than you may realize right then also uh, uh, we have you know another unique characteristic of social network is the emotional factor here see that means while websites of the past were focused primarily on providing information to a visitor uh, the social network usually provides users with emotional security and a sense that no matter what happens uh, their friends are you know within easy reach right whether suffering through divorce or uh, you know let's say breakup or any other family crisis people are finding that the ability to jump online and communicate directly with the circle of friends provides a great deal of support in an otherwise you know unmanageable situation not only you know personal uh, thing in the time of crisis also as well okay so these are the characteristics of social media clear okay so that's all for today we have the uh, we also have the impact impact of social networks um, see uh, social media can be very influential on society in both positive and negative ways right it gives people a way to stay in touch with you know people who live far away so it lets people share fun or interesting and informative content it also gives businesses uh, you know a way to engage with customers right so one of the problems however is that anybody can share anything right including material that may not be accurate so in some cases real harm is done when people you know they spread fake news or an uh, you know unverified or false information and this can you know harm the private individuals as you know when someone is bullied online uh, we have something called as trolling these days right so it can also have a harmful impact on a society as a whole so social media has it uh, you know has made it very easy to spread information quickly because Facebook and Twitter, uh, you know, timelines move so quickly. Viewers don't often verify what they have seen. A great deal of content is also spread through images and memes, which may or may not be based on valid information, right? So, of course, many memes are created to be funny, cute, or outrageous. And others, however, they are intended to influence our thinking, right? Even links to real articles can be misleading sometimes. It's, it's very, you know, safe to say that most people who see a headline and link they never read the whole article. Of course, most fake news stories don't tell you that they are fake, right? There are now several categories, you know, of what might be called as fake news sites. And there are satirical sites that publish parodies of news stories. So, um, you know, The Onion is an example of that. So, however, in the last few years, you know, many other uh, sites have appeared, right? Many don't make it clear that they are the satire sites, leading to confusion on the part of the readers as well. Uh, another example is the alt news, okay? So as more and more satirical news sites crop up, it can be hard to tell whether a story is real or fake. So of course, when you actually read an article, you can usually tell sometimes, right? So the problem, however, is that on social media, many people just glance at headlines and share links, that's it. They won't even read before you know, sharing. So social media stories, whether true or not, often go viral. And the more outrageous and newsworthy something is that, the more likely that many people will share it. But during a highly polarized election, people are motivated to share anything that supports the candidate or you know, even more likely attacking the opposing uh, candidates as well. So this can result in false stories widely circulating. Even if false stories are discredited or you know the damage is already done, right? So by the time we, you know, uh, uh, apologies published, millions of people may have already seen the story. It's really the widespread sharing of fake stories that cause harm on social media. 
So if you are a person of business that share lots of content, perhaps with the aid of social media software, you should be extra careful. Okay. Okay, so that's all. Have any doubt?